All right, I'm here with Scott Kreps, one of the creators of PursueGod.org, and we're just talking through uh, this thing about discipleship culture, envisioning a new kind of church in your local church community. Yeah, and that's really from kind of the heartbeat of Pursue God, is to create resources, to create a, a new kind of churches with a new, fresh focus on discipleship that gets uh, everyone involved. And uh, that's what we're after with Pursue God. And we, we, that's how we define a healthy church. When we say, when we talk about being a healthy church, we're actually talking about being a church that has a culture of discipleship where, where everyone knows how to disciple. So, Scott, talk us through this first point here that everyone is in the game. Yeah, so what we envision are churches where everyone is actively growing in their pursuit of God, which for us means that they go full circle. And by that, we mean uh, the three truths of foundations that people are trusting in Jesus, first of all, for salvation, but really just trusting Jesus throughout their life, exercising faith in God, going through life honoring God, that as Christians, uh, that salvation moment is obviously so important, but we want to live our lives to honor God, growing more and more like Jesus, loving God, loving other people, uh, but also not forgetting that a full circle pursuit of God also involves helping other people pursue God. And uh, that is a real key feature of our resources that we just talk about over and over again, is that as pursuers of God, as Christians, we need to be mentoring other people, we need to be making disciples. And that's really what it means to be a full circle Christian. And so we want to see churches where you can walk into the church lobby and go up to somebody and say, you know, who are you mentoring? Who are you discipling? And uh, they won't just have a weird look on their face like, who, what are you talking about? But uh, where everyone is actively engaged in discipleship and mentoring. And uh, it's a church where the pastoral team uh, can focus not just on doing all the discipleship, but can kind of focus on equipping people, uh, equipping people to be mentors, and allowing every Christian, every person in that church to be a mentor, to make disciples. And so that really requires a system, and that's that second point. Everyone uses the same system, the Pursue God system, so describe that real quick. Yeah, it's, like you said, it's, it's vital that everybody has the same system, because otherwise you're not really going to get a mentoring culture, because otherwise some of us are going to mentor differently, and it's going to be hard to pass that down to the next generation. Uh, of, of people that we're mentoring. Like if I do mentoring my own way, I might do it in a way that is really hard to reproduce. And so uh, in order to create a mentoring culture, which is what we want, we, we're not satisfied just to see a few people making disciples, but we want to see everyone making disciples. We need a consistent system. And so imagine, uh, if you will, a church where someone, you can walk up to somebody and say, you know, what topics are you covering? Uh, and the person isn't, again, wondering, what are you talking about? But they can say, oh, you know, I'm, I'm mentoring someone, and we're talking about what it means to uh, investigate faith. We're talking about, you know, why someone should pursue God, or maybe you are having conversations about parenting little kids or parenting teens, and you're doing this in a way where everyone's not doing their own thing. Uh, like some people are reading a book, some people are watching some 50-part video series. You're using the same system. Uh, at a Pursue God Church, you're using the flex method, uh, and you're, you're doing that method over and over again with people to not only train them in these truths, but train them how to mentor other people. And uh, that's, again, not one or two people or a small group or two small groups, but the whole church is together and using the same system. Yeah, and then that really benefits, like we say, mentoring then benefits every single environment. Not just It's not like it's just one sort of program, like a side program, but it really is sort of a mechanism that benefits every environment. Explain some of the environments that that might help them, that kind of a system. Yeah, I mean, just think of parents who are equipped to, to raise their kids and to mentor their kids, uh, not just their kids, but teenagers, where parents don't just say, well, it's the church's job to disciple my kids, or you know, I hope by luck they get discipled, but parents are equipped, they have tools in order to really mentor their kids with confidence. Small group leaders, again, they're not just doing sort of kind of dry Bible studies, but they have the tools to mentor the people in their small group and raise up new leaders and raise up new mentors and to pass that training on. Youth at your church are released to start their own mentoring groups that our teenagers can mentor younger students, can mentor siblings, uh, where preachers are able to focus their message in such a way that it 
empowers conversations, preachers who realize that it's not all about that time on Sunday, but it's about ongoing conversations throughout the week, uh, and where you're able to raise up other lay teachers uh, who can preach and who can teach and who can lead, and everyone in the church becomes real clear and concise, where everyone is able to talk about the biblical truths in a compelling way, and really to be a mentor. And so it, it affects all of your church, all age ranges, all all peoples, and uh, that's why we think it's such an important movement. Well, and then the last benefit really is it extends even beyond the church walls. It's not just good for the church itself, but even for you know what some churches call evangelism. Yeah, that's right, because when we talk about discipleship and mentoring, you might think that we're talking about just sort of in-house, this is just for Christians, but really, a mentoring culture is going to change the way evangelism works in your church, because everybody is going to be equipped to have conversations with coworkers, neighbors, friends. Uh, everyone is going to know how to have conversations about everyday life and about God with, uh, with people who are maybe interested in God or just sort of awakening to their interest in God, but who aren't yet Christian. And so instead of just hoping that, you know, the pastor can do the evangelism or a select group of all-stars in the church, everybody can make disciples, meaning everybody can reach outside the walls of your church and to, and to reach out to out, outsiders. And really, the discipleship starts before a person even comes to church on Sunday, that hopefully in a mentoring culture, people have already had conversations about uh, real important issues in their life before they come to church on Sunday, which only prepares them uh, in a greater way to be connected to the church. And so all of this is uh, what can happen when you have a mentoring culture in your church. Yeah, and part of the reason that that can happen outside of the church is because of, of our topics, and we're looking at our topics now. There's a bunch of topics that are just life issues. It's not just Bible study type topics that Christians tend to be interested in. But it's topics that relate to just about every area of life. So outside of the church, you're just you're you're sharing links, you're sharing posts, and you're making yourself available to have some of these life-changing conversations with a biblical worldview in mind. And a lot of a lot of neighbors and friends don't really understand what a biblical worldview is, and they're not probably interested in doing a Bible study. So if you if you get at that through the context of a topic that's interesting to them, it really does allow this mentoring culture to go way outside of, uh, you know, of, of just sort of the typical way we think of evangelism. So Scott, thanks for sharing that. And again, it, for the pastors and leaders using this, you can find uh, these resources. If you go to the pastoral team at pursuegod.org, if you go to that page, you can find this conversation there. And remember at the bottom of this conversation, just like every other resource, we've got discussion questions and we've got links and downloads and also uh, follow-up resources on this topic. So we encourage you to check out all of those, have this conversation with your leadership team and see if this won't help uh, bring a new culture to your church. Scott, thanks for sharing. Thank you.